Ralph here once again. It is now midnight, March 7th. Now, before I lead with the stories, what the two stories I want to cover real fast in the beginning is basically the incredible outcome in reference to zinc levels in the blood and survival outcomes in reference to coronavirus. Second, we're going to look into a little bit more depth is basically COVID vaccinations not being specific to any particular vaccine resulting in swollen lymph nodes, which can create a tremendous amount of confounding for those going back for routine testing in reference to cancer diagnosis. Not saying it causes cancer. What we're saying is it may yield in swollen lymph nodes, which could result in a misdiagnosis. But that we'll get into a second. But first, I'm going to show you a little bit of data trickery, which is real important as hopefully this pandemic is winding down to basically inoculate uh, misinformation presented by major news outlets. I want to show you visually a trick. First off, this is up-to-date data in reference to new cases overall across the globe. We're going to go to the six continents, not the seven, the six, the Asia, Africa, Europe, North America, Oceania, and South America. What I want to show you is you see the drop in cases. Now, what we're trying to do is to give you an idea how much impact coronavirus itself is having on the rest of the globe as far as infection rates. So look at no cases overall. You see Africa, Europe, North America, Oceania, and South America. Now, what confounds individuals visually is this basically this y-axis. Have They all have different y-axis, 40, 250,000, so on and so forth. When the data is presented honestly, let's say, for example, I'm just going to update the, uh, the axis right here. Share y equal true. Now, look at the visual impact. This will give you an idea of the new cases overall. Now they're all sharing one of the axes, the y-axis of the continent with the highest case, new cases overall. So here's Asia, Africa, Europe, North America. Now you can see visually how that creates a little bit better perspective of how one particular area of the globe is being hammered as compared to other areas of the globe, regardless of pandemic mitigation factors and so on and so forth. I just want to show you that visually because people sometimes lose sight, no pun intended, of how powerful data presentation can be for both good and for both evil. So let us proceed with the information as follows. First one, the swollen lymph nodes following COVID-19 vaccination are back on February 24th. What they discovered here at Massachusetts General Hospital is that individuals were getting vaccinated and then going in for their cancer screening. Now, the reason it's vital, and I want to get this out now, number one, most of the media outlets, so I'm not aware of any news outlets that have presented this data to the public. And the reason it's important to do now, even with the potential loss of viewership on YouTube, is because as the COVID load goes down in the hospitals, routine screening is going to go back up. And individuals are going to become vaccinated. And if they're vaccinated, it can result in this. They can mistake it for nodes that are swollen because of cancer. So I'm trying to do here in a very humble, small way, what we have like an average of 70 views in a video, is basically get the information out there one way or the other that individuals, when they get vaccinated and go for cancer screening, that it's important that they basically give to their oncologist the information that they had just been vaccinated. And what they did now, too, outside of even beyond mammograms, they now expanded the recommendation to include care for patients who undergo other imaging tests for diverse medical reasons. And the guidance is published in the Journal of Radi uh, College Radiology. What they're looking for is this. They recommend right there. I recommend that imaging centers document COVID-19 vaccination information, including the dates of vaccination, the location of the injection site, and the type of vaccine in all patient forms and ensure this information is easily available to radiologists at the time the image is interpreted. So again, it's 
want to get the information out there. I know it's not exciting or enthralling, but however, just the same to the individual who gets diagnosed falsely because the oncologist or radiologist did not have the information in reference to recently being vaccinated. It could be life altering, shattering, and hopefully we don't head down that route. I begin for any individual. I just regret that this is really a service of the news that should be propagating this information. But unfortunately, no, it's not. So if you're lucky enough to stumble upon this video that I'm doing uh, or this information on hand, share it, please. All right, now let's get right into the data. Let's go into the zinc. This pandemic, without a doubt, has been so nutritionally centered from zinc to selenium to D to C so on and so forth and of course melatonin you know on and on and on but to put in direct terms of how powerful zinc is in reference to basically helping with the outcome i want to use the wording directly the study reveals that a one unit increase in zinc in blood plasma now keep in mind this is uh micrograms and they left out the mg to show you real fast there it is right there. I find uh, little typos like that in public research or public releases of data all the time, which are very vital. So for each one unit increase in zinc in blood plasma is directly linked to a 7% reduction of the risk of dying of COVID-19. To reiterate or to repeat, the study reveals that a one unit increase of zinc in blood plasma is directly linked to a 7% reduction of the risk of dying from COVID-19. Now you begin to compile out with all the information nutritionally and how basically COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 or whatever you want to call it, basically a myriad of different viruses and bacterial infections are, are basically exacerbated by nutritional deficiencies. It really, really brings home how powerful, basically in long-term care facilities and other elements like that in hospitals, or just basically any individual period, if you truly, truly are worried about this pandemic or future pandemics, nutritional fortification is a vital element. If you're not sure, get tested by a qualified professional, get all levels tested, and then basically at least, at least you have a benchmark in which to work from. But as well i'll also have the link to the, basically the full study and they have the full study published and i like when they do that now, the interesting part about this too as far as the zinc is it was chloroquine they, what they were actually researching at the time and they found out what zinc did so i'm going to repeat verbatim uh what how it, this actually may benefit individuals effects of zinc on the replication of coronavirus now once you hear this word replication not only do you think about an individual being sick you think about that individual becoming a, a vector for disease transmission to proceed. The study individual collaboration, da, 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 their efforts use in vitro techniques to have focused on studying in parallel effects of zinc levels on the virus's capacity to expand. The results confirm that the poor prognosis in patients with low concentration of zinc is due to the effect that the lack of zinc, here it goes, has an immune imbalance, we know, and the increase in viral load. They found that low levels of zinc enhance the expansion of the virus in infected cells. Now you can take that and run with the information per se. We know vitamin D, for example, is shown to reduce transmission by 51% and so on and so forth. So you start comparing this with the nutritional fortification it will not be long that someone is going to come up in the medical profession. They're going to have a pandemic nutritional uh, protocol where if a pandemic breaks out, they're going to recommend the supplement uh, fortification in individuals probably above the norm on a on basically a national scale, depending on the country that they're in, in order to create firewalls in order to stop the spread. I prefer, obviously, of course, nutritional fortification and everything from 
you know, in long-term care facilities, hospitals, and so on and so forth, things that should be done on a regular basis to begin with. But nutritional, without a doubt, is strongly correlated with the severity of the pandemic, either negative or positive. All right, we passed. Now let's go with a few other tidbits of information before we get into data analytics. Let's look in basically decreases in exercise. This is just this is just trivia, but it's important just the same because in, in future pandemic mitigation strategies, uh, reducing an individual's movement may make sense initially, but over end, overall, long term, we're not too certain that's going to be a good thing. This is a study of college students. This is, puts it in perspective. The average steps of subjects declined from 10,000 steps to 4,600 steps per day. Rates of depression increased from 32% to 61% because they found that those that exercise obviously were restricted from movement and that was so much part of their life that obviously that, you know, exercise, it's like a chicken and egg effect. Uh, exercise tends to reduce depression rates and so lack of exercise, so on and so forth. But are you more motivated to exercise because you feel better? You know what I mean? But that is pretty much a pretty dramatic increase, uh, at least in steps, a 50% reduction in movement per day, stepwise. And here is the scary part. It is not something you just can mitigate and say, oh, we'll have some temporary exercise to basically uh, offset the potential increase in depression. No. Short-term restoration of exercise habits did not provide mental health relief. We all feel like animals in a cage, and we all probably are familiar with Maslow's hierarchy, which probably to me is the most elitist uh, conjecture ever in reference to the psychology of an individual, which first, the base of the pyramid, or whatever, uh, they say basically security needs must be satisfied first, and as you begin to get these needs completed, you move on to self-actualization. Well, we all know animals in nature that if you take them out of the wild and throw them in a cage, you could feed them all day long. It's not going to make a difference in the outcome of their survival. That goes pretty much strong with a lot of us individuals out there that need freedom in order to feel alive. All right, to proceed forward. Next one, UNLV. This is another confounding information. Now, this has to do with video conferencing. It's important, again, we're moving towards the future. Phone calls, ironically, help people feel well. The confounding information. It's kind of like, remember when they thought the internet was going to bring everyone together? You know, kumbaya type event? Oh, the internet's going to connect the world. Well, obviously, we recognize the internet with uh, the outcome of censorship and trying to stop this and that and so on and so forth and social engineering. The internet has probably did the exact opposite as far as bringing us all together. And here goes one more for it. Video chats. Video chats, on the other hand, were associated with increased levels of stress, loneliness, and relationship difficulties. On the theoretic level, do you think that the richer the medium, the better it is because it can approximate face-to-face -face communication? Think again. But because video chat tries to be face-to-face -face when it's not, I think it almost makes you even more sad that you can see the person, yet they're not actually there. Because you can't get those context clues, those haptics, those things that make us like being in a room with the person. I'll leave that link to the research if you want to look at the study itself. It's actually kind of interesting. It's, but again, it's confounding because you think logically that it would actually be better at decreasing loneliness. And the reason it's important is this. Where is video conferencing and chatting happening most outside the business? long-term care facilities when people cannot visit their relatives. So they think that video chatting is going to do the job in improving their mood. Look at the data, research it, cipher through it, do it again, see if the information is accurate or not, if it's just a correlation or it's actually having a direct causative effect. All right, now we're going to go right into the data engineering. Oh, before I get into the data engineering, I want to say thank you uh, to COVID tracking. Uh, this is their last week of keeping track of the pandemic uh, data as it's going to yield the information more towards government resources. For example, 
like um, the Department of Health and Human Services, which can make it a little bit more difficult for me to basically scrape data. But however, though, think of it this way. Our world governments were woefully inadequate on data analytics. That's the one thing the pandemic exposed. And if it wasn't literally for the data analysts out there that compiled the data and basically gave something that someone can use in a format, hopefully they didn't misinterpret, uh, we'd be in the dark. And it's not the data an analyst's fault for presenting the data, which caused a lot of these uh, bureaucrats to become imbued with power. It was basically, just to give you an idea, these people themselves, the data analysts, were really truly, uh, I don't want, you can't use the word heroic, but their actions were vital, vital to getting a solid understanding of what was going on. In the beginning, bureaucrats just made all these, these just these knee-jerk reactions, which we paid a heavy price for. But if anybody's going to secure your freedom, your freedom of movement and things like that, and to give you a good uh, situational awareness of what's going on, you have to ask yourself, why did the governments not have the data available in the beginning? Why did they not make a massive rush to collect data? And these individuals, which with no additional money or income whatsoever, collected the data and compiled it in a way that can be visually cued so people can make an accurate call. Government did nothing in the beginning. Now they are. They do better, but they got caught off guard. So these individuals, like Our World and Data, COVID tracking, so on and so forth, you really got to uh, give a hand. Now let's proceed right into the data itself. Let's go right here. And I, I feel bad they're gone because they've been, uh, this is our 21st uh, review of the data, uh, 21 weeks. And so I get relied on them a lot myself. To proceed this forward, all right, here we are. I'm gonna look at the world data just to start. And I want to show you that data right off the bat. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna move real fast. All right, here we are as new cases, per, uh, smooth per million. Now this source we're working right here, we're looking at our world and data, which I believe is maintained by the individuals at Oxford University, which I admire. Uh, some of the data needs to be cleaned up though, because when we get to the face mask thing, you'll see why in a second. New cases moved per million, new deaths moved per million. This is on a global scale. All right, so yeah, that's the data of the world. Mortality percentage. Uh, obviously, as more cases are becoming asymptomatic, uh, it doesn't mean we're better at treatment. It just means basically you know, we have a long way to go on treatment. You can't, since, since the pandemic is so uh, nutritionally centered, whether you like it or not, it is correlation wise, you can't medicate yourself out of a nutritional deficiency. It's not going to work. In fact, even worse, if a person, say, for example, is very highly vitamin D deficient, or in this case, zinc deficient, and the medications, tend to help them overcome one time, you're, you're, you're basically potentially creating a, um, uh, a vector which may never go away, which we learned from polio. Uh, those will understand the hidden meaning in that. All right, here we go. Do, do, do. New case is smooth. Sweden, bouncing up. Interesting thing about Sweden is they started imp implementing the masks and the information that we had six weeks ago before they were all arguing whether SARS-CoV-2 was micronized and if it was below five microns, if it could still be infectious, obviously they found out now it is uh, very commonly at the three micron to two micron level. What was the main problem? When a surgical mask was warm in a restricted breathing airflow volume, not saying CO2 in the blood and things like that, airflow volume below 15 liters per minute. What happened? Nasal deposition increased dramatically. So yeah, you can draw a strong correlation between that data now that Sweden started recommending masks and increasing in basically the exact same thing. But that's beside the point. And again, I'm, I'm adding publisher bias directly but only in a hope that it actually is researched to either be confirmed or denied. All right, here we are. You notice the drop overall. Boom, boom, boom. See Sweden? Do, 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 do. That's only within a short period of time. When we get to the mask mandates, you'll see exactly how that correlates almost exactly with the line. It doesn't mean much. Correlation is not causative, but still, it's curious. 
here is our Asian friends, which basically have never really entered the game. All right, and so here is Great Britain and the United States all dropping, so on and so forth. And you figure here's Sweden going up now, and it's been how long? And it's just now rising? Think about that. Here is uh, the precipitous drop in cases in the United States of America and cases per million. There we are. I should put a grid line on there, but you can get an idea. Uh, cases to positive rate. Purple is the positivity rate and cases per million. So we're not seeing, you hear all these variants and things like that. You're not really seeing a dramatic shift in positivity rate. So the variant thing and the news they like to exploit a lot doesn't mean eventually, you know, if, if you say it's going to rain every single day, eventually you are going to be right. It's going to rain. But that doesn't mean it's because, you know, Little Johnny didn't tie his shoe, and you're correlating with rain. Yeah, if Little Johnny didn't tie his shoe, and it rains one day. You can't draw that. You you can't say that's a causative relationship. That's what the media is trying to imply. Eventually, if you keep on guessing, they'll eventually guess right, and they'll say, "Look what happened." But here it is. Data is that's what data is for. That's why I miss COVID tracking going away. Here it goes. The dot. Here is the drop in precipitous cases from January 11th to today. Gives you a better perspective. Here is uh, da, 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 new deaths per million. Uh, Sweden has a higher infectious rate. There's no doubt about it, but their death rate, mortality rate un for everybody, unfortunately. Uh, but it's been steady. It has not changed, even though the case rates have gone up. And uh, da, 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 see, new deaths in Sweden. Here it is, even though the case rates are now higher in the United States, I believe. The mortality rate is at 2.5, if you can read that there, compared to the United States, which has dropped down to 5.2. There we go. Ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum. And here's our our comparison. New deaths USA versus all of Asia. All right. Obviously, this is the United States right there. And this is all. We're going to talk about all of Asia. And there we are. And deaths per million again. Armenia is always in a close second to the United States. That's of all the Asian countries. Uh, they're trying to compare apples to apples. And so mortality. Now here's the numbers. Asia total mortality, now 403,612 out of 4,463,000,000. United States total mortality, 524,319 out of a population of 329 million. In perspective, Asia is suffering one mortality, a uh, victim of coronavirus, every 11,057 people. Uh, the United States is having one victim out of every 627. 11,057. One mortality compared to the United States, 627 to one mortality. In Asia, for those not familiar, are including places like India, Iran, so on and so forth, Turkey, you know, so people just, it's not just China per se, even though there we are in Hong Kong. And so there's your perspective on a global scale. And so we move down. There's a world, this is where the vaccinations began to start really taking hold. That's about January 4th. And You'd be hard pressed when you look at the data to say vaccinations have anything to do with the drop in the uh, new cases smooth per million. You'll see why in a second. So don't take that bait. All right, correlations, totally useless here. Eventually, you know, in the beginning a few weeks ago, I was correlating uh, vaccination with higher mortality percentages. No. And so here we go. Do, 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 do. And so this is what we're looking at here. People fully vaccinated on a global scale. This is the total world. We're looking at 0.81 of the globe has been fully vaccinated against new deaths smooth per million, which if you notice has been dropping to, to, to down to 1.128. I thought I saw a rise there, but yeah, right there for a second. And then it went back down to 1.128. And we're looking at new cases smooth per million, a little bit higher. We saw that uptick for a second, but that doesn't mean much. Mortality percentage though, the real important thing is now back down to 2.28, so it seems to be falling again. New deaths per world, that's a really bad graph. I'm sorry about that. Uh, going down, 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 down. Remember a few weeks ago, this was a giant X. Uh, mortality percentages, new cases per million. So red is mortality, purple is new cases per million. And remember, we're not sharing the same access, so please be aware of that. World vaccine to mortality percentage. I want to save this because data is to be observed. All because I observe it doesn't mean it's happening. 
And so the observation before where vaccines were resulting in higher mortality is not holding. But you know what? I'm not emotionally attached to the data. And so if the outcome is different than what I expected, then guess what? I adapt. That's what we have to do. And so, you know, if, you, if it doesn't seem like you're, the conjecture is appropriate, you change your conjecture according to the situational awareness at the time. That's if you're in the military, you know what situational awareness means to proceed. All right. And all, of course, too, trying to do predictive models like this, which is a total disaster, does help so, as well. Uh, disaster, disaster, theoretical quantiles. Hmm. That's interesting. All right. This is vaccine to mortality correlation prediction models. So there may be something there. Uh, but the residuals, pff, no. All right. New cases per million world. I promise to get better at that. Uh, if you notice the drop, new cases per million, new deaths per million. Now you look at this. Here we are. New cases. All right. The United States has dropped precipitously. So you see a little bit of an uptick. All right. This Europe thing, I'll explain that in a little bit when we get to it. Uh, Spain is doing something really weird with its numbers, which is causing negative cases. So here we go. But look, here we look. Look at South America. You see a little uptick there. How now it's crossed the line between North America and there. Pay attention to that. Uh, new deaths. You see the uptick right there. South America is going up and USA is going down. Uh, here's our total graphs, new cases smooth, new cases smooth Africa, uh, Europe, again, I investigated that. We did a little of a, it's a simple query, I'll show you in a second. Uh, new cases smooth, Oceania, remember, look at the y-axis, the y-axis here is not the same as the y-axis there, all because they may follow patterns and look dramatic. Again, pay attention to the y-axis, y-axis. Graph's the same size. Y-axis is very different. It's between 250,000 and 500, big difference. All right, South America, you see a little uptick there? There's only two areas which are really kind of weird. Finland, Sweden, and, and of course, the continent of South America. I should make a comparison that way. But there it is, and that's the world. The new area chart. Do, 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 do. All right, here we go. Now we're going to look at some of the charts we looked at before. This new cases overall, I showed you that. And how it looks very, you know, more dramatic this way. But when we do a comparison, we all put, again, the y-axis again. I'm saying y-axis an awful lot. But it's important. It actually, this is how we, this is a global perspective as opposed to a geocentric perspective. So if you want to be geocentric, I will show you this chart, which makes the whole world look like it's coming to an end. If I want to give you a global perspective... I show you this chart. All right, proceed. New deaths. Here we are. See a little bit of a. All seem to be dropping. Again, this is not sharing the same y-axis. Here we share the same y-axis. Who's holding us up? North America. South America a little bit uptick, but there's North America. All right, new cases per million. There you are on the y-axis. I'll show you what that is in a second. Yeah, again, we're sharing the y-axis. And now we go new deaths per million. Asia. This one right here, as comparison-wise, looks like we're all about in the same game. But this one particular chart here makes Europe look like it's not it's not faring as well but as compared to the other areas. And so here we go. This is what we're looking at. Spain. For whatever reason, Spain, I love looking at the auditing the data to find out what's going on. So look at a new case is smooth. You see the data right there? New case is smoothed. And so if we look at it, you begin to see, not do death smooth, new, this negative number. Now I have to query as far as not query. I have to talk to my friends in data, anal, uh, data analytics over there to find out why we're having such incredible negative reporting. Not negative as far as negative being a mood, but negative as far as why, how are cases being minus from the data reporting as opposed to being plus, which is unless there's some sort of data correction going on, which we're unaware of. Give you an idea of how this works too as far as a query. 
Let's go equals. And let's see the one part of Europe which has had no cases. Vatican City. So you see how that works as it compares to so Spain now is, is negative. Vatican City is zero and everyone else basically is you know above zero. All right, see that's all Europe as a whole. So you get an idea. All right, now let's go to the next one with the correlations. Do, 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 do. Ah, blinded. All right, heat map. For those unfamiliar with a heat map is, you know, we looked at this for the longest period of time. And let's look at stringency, the stringency index. Stringency index meaning the draconian pandemic lockdowns implied upon the population, which have no clue what's going on. Just they're hoping that their leaders actually know what they're doing. But they know what they're doing. They need data, and they operated very uh, precariously without any data whatsoever to make their judgment calls, just pure superstition and hyperbole. Here they are. Da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. I'm looking for 0.7s. The higher the, the color here, the stronger the correlation. Correlation, again, does not mean causation. So, stringency index, stringency index, has really had virtually no impact on anything. So, there we go. And again, uh, as I've always been amazed by, for example, 0.73, female smokers and being over the age of 70, I am still dumbfounded by that. And of course, <laughs> median age and, and age 70 or older. All right, we got some little oranges there. Um, uh, human development index, as far as being correlated with being over the age of 70. So again, that could be from census reasons and so on and so forth, but you get an idea. All right, and new deaths smoothed in life expectancy. But well, you can see that as well. All right, but here we go. Da -da 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 -da. Life expectancy, da -da -da, da -da -da. population density. I'm just we scroll through these correlations all the time. So I'm just moving real fast. Uh, United States, when we first started, it was at 3.6. And I thought the pandemic would be over back in June. Obviously, when they started testing people which were not as susceptible to the negative outcomes of the coronavirus, such as those 50 or younger, it really showed a higher transmission rate, but the mortality rate obviously became adjusted. So whatever that means. Here we go. At 6.2, we were last week, and so now we are at 5.28, which is very good news. Uh, da, 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 da. So let's move it to 5.3. See what we come up with. And... So there we are right there. And so that's where the United States, as far as all the countries doing better than the U.S. Not to be long in the United States, but I want to give you a perspective. So here we are. And do, 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 yeah. And world mask. Now, I would like to talk to the old people because there are a lot of states in the United States itself which are not abiding by any mask mandate. Which is really weird because if you live in a very, very liberal state like I do in California, we think every state has mask mandates. In reality, no. And we discovered this a while ago because we're trying to find um, controls. You need to find someone where there's no mask use in order to say, well, is this pandemic mitigation factor working compared to these people which are doing nothing? Which used to be Sweden. Until Sweden started using, uh, raising the mask mandates. Sweden raised it to a two. But the weird part about it, again, is this correlation, is when they started wearing masks and imposing masks on the population, the infection rates went up. Although the mortality rates had pretty much stayed stable, if not gone down. And so now we have Somalia, Vanuatu, and Syria. I have no clue why it bounces back and forth. But a lot, uh, very few ones, but a lot of people jumping on the mask thing. But reality, think about it. United States, no way is a four. No, 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 no. No way is a four. Not now. This needs to drop down. There has to be some sort of averaging there. Not yeah, So they need to adjust their data. All right. Here we go over here. I don't want to look at the mask levels anymore. Let's just look at this. It basically, because the mask levels have had nothing to do with anything, and they're no longer reliable data. Uh, I used to, I put the mask levels in initially because mask levels were the best indicator and stringency index. If someone had a mask level of four, they were probably implementing shutting down schools, this and that, and so on and so forth. Uh, but you know, you can't. That's it's it's not even a, a, a strong correlation anymore. I like to see the residuals on that one. All right, here we go. Sweden. Boo, boo, boo. There you see what happened. Mask mandate came into when they went from a zero 
independence, da da da, happiness, and so forth. And and of course, they didn't do it here. Think about this. They didn't do any mask here. Then all of a sudden, they started going into the mask thing. And yeah, the deaths have declined. But again, the cases have gone up because as they started implementing the masks, one thing became more interesting. They started also doing more testing. And so your tests per thousand have gone up and your caseload is going up. So in reality, we really don't know if they weren't doing that much testing prior to this. We really don't have a strong indicator because these are probably just people that are testing positive when they went to the office. I, if you know any data analysts, and biostatisticians, um, or epidemiologists in Sweden, I'd be curious to know um, what was happening. Columbia, da, 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 I don't know why I put that there anymore. Japan, uh, again, they went to a three, then back down to one. People think Japan's a four. No, just not. People, whether people would choose to wear a mask or not is their own prerogative, but as far as making it a mandate, that's different. Uh, look at this, as far as tests per thousand. I like seeing this. The separation is real important. Uh, New Zealand. If someone sneezes in New Zealand, there's a lockdown. So think about that. Does it mean it make a difference? I don't know. Because I have nothing to go by. What Sweden did prior didn't seem to make a difference. Then Sweden starts implementing mask rules. Again, don't know. It's called weaponizing uncertainty. You know, I could be, what if I was I decided to start wearing a lucky rabbit's foot at that time? And I start correlating, well, look, I'm wearing the rabbit's foot now, and there's no pandemic, so the rabbit's foot must work. Correlation is not causation. All right, here we go. Finland, uh, there's that. Now, Finland is an interesting thing. The taste per, the taste, the test per thousand has gone up, and so has their cases per million. And the weird part about it is obviously Finland and Sweden. Think about that, the area. So we're not looking basically at a higher mortality rate. But we are seeing a little bit more maniacal drive towards testing, even though it may not be resulting in higher hospitalization rates. Your choice. Again, I don't live in either Finland or Swindon, and um, big proponent of self-determination. India, again, you saw the total data. That nice separation there, positive, as far as tests per thousands and less cases being detected. Uh, Spain. 2019, SARS-CoV-2 was found in the sewage, and that was back in February 2019. And uh, what happened to that sample? Your call. France, remember? 2015, France had a bunch of SARS-CoV-1, and someone walked off with all of the virus. How quickly we forget. France, da da da, there's the testing, pretty much low. United Kingdom. It's nice to see them dropping so for the people. I'm not, I mean, for the people himself. But look at the testing. Look at this testing. They're testing like crazy. And look at the basically the caseload. Interesting, isn't it? Italy, where it all began, still, see right there. And so on and so forth. All right, let's go to Catholic COVID states. Do, do, do. All right, now the states that I include in the maskless. I know there's a lot more states that don't wear a mask or didn't have that mask mandate. But the reason I'm only looking at the states that had a mask mandate and dropped it is because I'm looking for rises, if it made any difference whatsoever, for controls. So it's like kind of like having a, a, a clinical test where you had a washout period and then you bring in, to, you know, let's say they're doing caffeine to, to see if it makes a difference on the energy. One day you give them placebo, six weeks, and next day you give them caffeine or vice versa. So you get it, it's, 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 it's close to a, you know, a randomized, but not quite. So I'm only looking at states that had a mask mandate and then did not. All right, so let's just go right to the information here. Positive per 100,000. Now think about it. You're a policy director. You control the CDC, or the NIH, or whatever. And you had to make your judgment based upon relevant data. You tell me what your judgment would be. All right, California, Florida. Iowa, Montana, Mississippi, North Dakota, New York, and Texas. All right, Texas, I just added to it this week because Texas said no more mask. Mortality increases, again, data anomaly. Positive per hundred thousands. Shorter span from January 4th. The reason I chose January 4th is because the introduction of the vaccine. Deaths per hundred thousand, I have no clue what Montana does. Montana's got the weirdest data 
uh, as far as its the patterns. You'll see in a second. Here we are. So this is what we're looking at right now. We are looking at states as far as positive increases per 100,000. I should have made that uh, a FIG subtitle, so don't get in my case for the people that do the programming. FIG subtitle, not PLT title. I apologize, I got confused. All right, Florida masks. Look at the, see the, the pattern. They all seem to have had their peak regardless of what the mitigation factor was, whether it be New York or California, which are heavy duty lockdowns. Uh, and then they all tend to drop. Look at this. Again, this is all sharing the Y, ah, not sharing the Y axis there. Let's get this right here. Do, 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 do. Well, I'm gonna go to the next one anyways, because it's gonna be too much work. Uh, but I don't wanna keep you that long. But you see, they, they see the same patterns there. And they all seem to have had their peak. Who knows what happened in November? And then they drop. But you notice they, a lot of them have this sharp peak. And it's really weird because a lot of states, for example, will correlate to November. November. Right about the exact same time except for Mississippi. And the other states as far as Florida, New York, California, and Iowa. Iowa is close to November. And you, you'll see these correlations here. And you know, it's almost traveling from state to state. All right. Now we are going to do, 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 do. Here we are showing the same correlations. The hospitalized per 100,000. And just to give you an idea, and just to see real fast, I should do this, but I'm going to bear with me for a second. We're going to put them all on the same y axis so we get a better understanding. Oops, not plus. Do, do, do. What do we have here? Let's give it a shot. All right, there we are. You look at this Montana. It's like, what the heck? But Montana threw out throws the entire graph off. But you get an idea. And this, again, is the hospitalization per 100,000. You see that correlation of the drop all across the board. It started to occur, actually, ironically, uh, in many of the states, sometimes before the vaccines came out, many, like, week after, even though the vaccines had no solid impact. Uh, because, let's say, for example, if we look at this, we go to Our World and Data. Yeah, at, at this point, the United States is only supposed to be 8.6% vaccinated. And that's now up to from January 3rd to March 5th. All right, let's proceed forward. Let's go on to, to, to hospital occupancy. Do, do, do. Here we are. This is a little confusing, so I'm going to go past this percentage of inpatient beds with COVID. Get an idea per state. This is all current information. All right, there's that. Look at this line. What does red represent? Red, red. Uh, red represents basically one thing. It's the average hospital occupancy. Uh, you know, this, there's debates between you know what years or whatever it is, but I put it at I put it at 72 percent. And here we are. We're right about the average hospital occupancy across the board as far as inpatient bed utilization. And there's your inpatient beds with COVID. All right, so there you are, that, and just to give you an idea. So we're right about at the norm as of now. Uh, do, 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 and there's that graph there, chart, 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 chart. Here we are, Alaska. I did that initially because I had a, a data anomaly right there. California, green line, follow the green line. Inpatient bed used by, inpatient beds, used by COVID patients. See right there? There was some concern there. Now it's the where it's at now. All right, here we go. New York, do, do, do. Uh, Florida, da, da, da. We know Florida's situation right there. And now think about this. Here, once again, spring break, people running around or whatever it is, having fun, enjoying themselves, bars open, things like that. And sensationalism and data are two different things. But the thing is, they would leave you with the impression that the whole world is going to come to an end. But reality, the data is not supporting their conjecture. Uh, I'm not even going to call it an hypothesis because they're not basing it upon information. They're just just making a, a general assumption outside of the light of all the relevant information that's been collected at this point in time. Iowa, no mask. North Dakota, no mask. This is the green level. Remember, the green line is inpatient beds used by COVID patient individuals. Um, I don't want to say COVID victims because people are in fact that recovering from COVID. Let's put it this way, recovering from COVID. All right, and there's you are, da da da. 
And keep in mind, uh, some people who did had to go to ICU for COVID, the hospital stays for quite long. This is Montana, Mississippi, and I got. I would love to figure out what this is right here. Uh, it, but this is no mask, no mask, Texas, no mask, Texas in March. Not no more Texas. And there's the data analytics. And did I bring it down? Do, do, do. Yeah, this gives you the uh, percentage of in-bed utilization, so on and so forth. I thought I had a list, a bar chart in reference to the vaccine, but maybe not there. Maybe it's here. All right, here we go. Here it is. If vaccine was delivery was perfect, here's the catch. If vaccine delivery was perfect, now what we are doing is we are, we are compiling both the Monera, Moderna, Moderna, and Pfizer's vaccine. And what we are doing, we are combining the, basically the, the, data, uh, the data columns. We'll start incorporating the Johnson & Johnson. Hopefully the CDC has new information, the Johnson & Johnson. So we'll start incorporating that as well, then merging the data frames. But if vaccine delivery was perfect, I want to know this, because that's full delivery, then basically this percentage of the population over here should have been administered both the first and second dose. All right, you see right there, 20%. The confounding information, which kind of doesn't draw a solid correlation, if this was a crime scene, our vaccination rates appear to be more right around here. All right, at least the data is actually being reported. So we go back to our world and data. We're looking at, not Serbia, 8.6% of the population is shown as being fully vaccinated. All right, so if, that is, if that's the case, now it's updated March 6th. All right, and that's their information data that they're utilizing. So basically, if it was accurate, it would be at 8.6%. But so we have about double the amount of vaccine being have been delivered to each state. And so, for example, this is as of March 4th. I'm just checking the dates. Delivered to each state. And these are the percentages numerically. This is just the bar chart. You should have a much higher vaccination rate. So it doesn't look like the problem is in logistics as far as delivering the vaccine. It looks like the problem with vaccines itself is actually uh, the administration of the vaccine to the individuals. So it really doesn't appear to be a shortage of vaccine. I know they're trying to increase the image of what's called exclusivity to try to create a, uh, a demand for something, which they're fearful you know, in the back of their head. That truly reality that there should not be a demand for. But that is still, it means they have like for every vaccine, all the vaccines they fully administered, they have a whole other batch of the exact same amount, if not greater, sitting in a warehouse someplace. So if this is the total amount of vaccine being delivered and 8.6% of the total vac vaccine being administered, yeah, you either have a lag in administration of the vaccine or something else. But again, it's I just I remember when they made their argument in the beginning a few weeks ago with you with you and I when we followed through, and they said they wanted to create the illusion of exclusivity and celebrity ship, and they started using those social engineering terms. Yeah, that, that that's uh, don't have to even be suspect about it. They they already stated their intention outright in reference to that. But again, that's that's dealing with the data at hand. Whether their methods or methodology or psychology works, I don't know. All I know is a lot of people want this to be over with. So whatever people are happy with, as long as it's done. And people can move on with their lives in a normal fashion as opposed to a Munchausen via Stockholm type fashion. But again, let's cover the information we covered tonight as follows. Ba -ba -ba. First one, zinc. Very level of zinc. What is it? For a microgram... Remember, microgram, it doesn't show there. It's a data thing, but it is microgram. There it is, you see, do, 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 do. Wherever it went, microgram, well, it was somewhere. For every microgram, basically of zinc, for every point, I should say, of zinc levels in the system. Now I'm just annoyed, there, no, that it, nope. Nope, 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 there. So there, for every microgram or point, it resulted in a, what was it? A 7% reduction in the risk of dying from COVID-19. How many people do you know are going to be in the hospital 
And how many people do you know are going to be administered zinc, C, D, things that have strong known correlations that will not be harmed if they're brought up just up to the regular dietary daily allowance? So you let me know if anybody is actually, if any hospitals are actually ministering that. I know some of the protocols are, but I'm just curious. But then if what they find that it did, zinc, they had the interesting effect of low levels of zinc enhanced the expansion of virus into infected cells. All right, so point number one. Point number two, which I led with, swollen lymph nodes as a result of COVID-19 vaccines. We're not specific into any particular vaccine itself. All we know is that they are making the recommendation, Massachusetts General Hospital, that individuals have everything recorded. So when they go into their screening, to their oncologist, their radiologist, they know exactly what to look for uh, just in case. Again, just in case. So they can have the information available so we can reduce false positives down because I guarantee you false positives scare the life out of people. There's no reason a person should be told they have cancer when they don't, all because the information being disseminated by other medical professionals is not fluidly making it through our airways. Our number two, or the internet, or whatever. Three, exercise. Well, not happening, and doing it on a temporary basis is not going to make a difference, it seems like, but I'll have a link to the article. And the other confounding factor, just like the internet bringing us all together, Think again, video chats are actually associated with more loneliness, i.e. for those in nursing homes, long care facilities, which can't have visitation from family, rethink the protocol. Again, gratitude, thank you. The links will all be there. And also too, next week, when the COVID thing is going through, and part of the reason too, uh, I want to allude to why so much research in reference to SARS-CoV-1 was restricted. Uh, a lot of people don't know, and this is the bonus round. Because a while ago, back in 2012 especially, from a research article in 2001, they actually gave the plan on how to base, not the plan, not intentionally, they tried to do it for scientific rationale so they could actually develop a protocol against it. But a while ago, an engineered mouse virus left us one step away from the ultimate bioweapon. The reason that was important is this. They were merely trying to make a mouse contraceptive vaccine for pest control, a virus that kills every one of its victims by wiping out their immune system. This is what spooked a lot of political officials, and this is why a lot of research into certain areas of dynamics of viruses stopped, because there's an ugly side to this. And the weird part about it, too, you have to look at this, the commentary, but it's a good way to show how I ought to alter a smallpox to make it more virulent. Former second in command of the civilian branch of the Soviet germ warfare program. All right, so I guess if anybody's going to know, they will know. And the thing about it is, is that when they went to make this vaccine, it was done by accident. No one was trying to make something to harm anybody. It literally was just simply trying to make something, a contraceptive in response to pest control, which resulted in something which potentially can have very, very dire outcomes. Again, I'm not going to link this. If you want me to link it, make a comment, then I will, but no, no reason to unless you don't want to know. Again, I'll start covering this stuff more in depth on the weekends when the pandemic stuff begins to go down. A lot of information we pass up, which is not going to serve any, any benefit to improve a person's personal health, but it gives an incredible appreciation for what goes on out there. Uh, positive and or negative, but hopefully positive. Ralph Stryer signing off once again. Thank you, gratitude, and look forward to seeing you all once again either Tuesday or Saturday. And as always, just, just the same. Have a hard time saying goodbye. Catch you all later on. Thank you, gratitude, humbly. See you next time. Bye.